imagine if Squad was World War I. That's what this game is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Beyond the Wire. Now, coming out in October 21st of 2020, this game is running on the same engine that Squad and Postscriptum are running on, developed by a different company, however, published by Offworld Industries, who made Squad. This game at retail is $35, however, we do have the Steam Summer Sale that's going to be coming up at the end of June, and that's why I wanted to get this video out to see if there are people that are interested in a game like this. Because, to be honest, the game does not have enough love right now, and it needs more players. And the biggest issue that we're running into is that most of the recent reviews are people just oh downvoting the game because it doesn't have players, when in reality, this game has a lot of potential and it's a lot of fun. Throughout this video, though, I'm going to be showing different types of gameplay and explaining some of the different things that this game has to offer that Postscriptum and Squad don't do or similar things that they do. Now, this game is very similar. You have your class system set up just like you would in Squad and Postscriptum. You have rally points that you can put down, and they have a little different game modes than what you would see in Squad and Postscriptum. Now, this game mode, you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five different objectives for us to take. Delta, Echo, Charlie, Bravo, and Alpha. So A through E. Got him. And huge underground channel that pretty much connects everything as well. Which is pretty cool. And you can see that the way that this game works is that it's trench based. So you work through the phase lines B, C, D, E, so on and so forth as you make your way down across the map. It's also important to note that even though that this game seems to be pretty close to dead as far as players go, the game is incredibly fun. And to note, they are still updating the game. For example, as of April 25th, they were showing off the ANZAC or the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps that is going to be coming to the game, and they just released a hot fix to some issues that they had May 19th. So without further ado, I'm going to roll some gameplay. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. If you like this type of content, be sure to smash that subscribe button and hit that like button. It helps me out a bunch, and we will hopefully see you in the next video or on the battlefield in one of these games. Thanks, everybody. Now, as you can see, the different forces that they have, they have the French Republic, the American Expeditionary Forces, British, Canadian, and then the Harlem Hellfighters. So they have a lot of different options you can pick from, which is pretty cool. And they obviously have different classes among them. I think that a lot of people would really enjoy this type of gameplay. It's not nearly as running simulator-esque that you will feel with uh, games like Squad and Postscriptum. The maps are a lot smaller, at least on the server I'm playing on. And if you do end up getting the game, you're most likely going to be playing this server because it's going to be the populated one. Now, I was looking, and the weekends are definitely a lot more full than the weekdays, which is really important to know. You guys have been holding. Good job. Guys, good job on the defense. Good job on the defense. Keep it up. Keep it up. Ooh, I get now, you can't ADS grenade. when you have the gas mask on, which adds a new layer of combat and fear to the game because if you can't ah, ADS, shit, obviously bolt actions Charlie are again. gonna be useless. Oh! The ragdolls are so much different in this game than in like squad and post scriptum though. I feel like they're, they kind of rubber band all over the place in this one. Which adds for some hilarity as we saw with the bayonet dude. Now one of the cool things I will say about this game is that because of the bolt actions being the primary weapon that everyone's able to use, it makes close quarters combat a lot more frequent because of that, where you have to stop reload and you have to manually click. So when I shoot here, it will stay that round. That spent round will stay in the chamber until I click again in order for that to pop out. So because of that, it makes some very interesting firefights where you could be close to somebody and have to click again or don't run out of ammo very quickly with that five round, I guess, clip inside of the gun. So it adds for very interesting gameplay. So as you can see, we're gonna be playing as the French army and we're facing the Germans. It's the first battle of Ypres, which is in Belgium. Uh, I actually, this is where the first use of chemical gases were used in World War One. fun fact for you. I did a little project on that when I was in college. Uh, so I have a couple of real World War I gas masks, German gas masks. My great-grandfather was a machine gun infantryman in World War I. Interesting stuff that we're actually kind of seeing this. But there were French and uh, Canadians as well that were here that were killed with chemical gas that was sent by, I believe it was chlorine gas sent by the Germans. They sent it over while uh, it was a little bit later in the evening and the wind was just right. So it was able to push across into the lines. And because chlorine gas is denser than air, it sinks down into the trenches and basically suffocates you. So that's what ended up happening for these unfortunate souls that ended up getting killed. And reading some of the first-hand accounts of it is absolutely horrifying. 
One of the things they do a really good job in this game is capturing that feel of the pictures that you see from World War One. The just absolute mass carnage and destruction of the trees, the buildings, everything is just kind of a shell of what it used to be. And that makes a really fun and interesting environment to play. But it's just frustrating to see this game kind of flounder with a low player count, unfortunately. Now the French used to wear these red and blue uniforms, which were very based off of their past uniforms, think like in the Napoleonic time, uh, where they would wear these red pants and blue jacket. And early on in the war, 1914, that's what they were wearing. It wasn't until later on when you start to see those sky blue or horizon blue jackets and uniforms. And the reason they have those is to try and blend in with that, again, horizon. When you come up across and you see the blue, that's the goal is for that to blend in with the horizon when you're going over in the moment. So they learned very quickly that maybe that traditional standing, you know, in front of your enemy is not going to work here. And it is just like thinking about in World War One, trench warfare being the main way of combat. You're not seeing your enemy in front front like you were back in those times. So that's where you have these big pushes. For different uniforms, different technologies, things like that. Now what's interesting is if you take a look at the history of World War One and see how it kind of came across, you're gonna see an insane amount of industrialization where you have the war beginning and to getting to a point where technology was just catching up with the tactics and things like that. So a lot of the tactics that were used during World War One were very much based on previous doctrine where you know you can take mass charges and you're okay with taking mass casualties. But the thing is with the machine gun and with the heavy artillery and chemical weapons that were all introduced as the war progressed from 1914 to 19. You see that trenches become the big thing to try and stop each other from using these technologies and being able to basically create a giant stalemate. See if this guy's gonna come up or not. How did I miss? This is what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. <laughs> it makes awkward if you miss those shots. Now, interesting stuff. We are playing the first battle of Ypres, which you can see at the bottom kind of left hand of your screen. On the second Battle of Ypres, that is where they saw the chemical weapons being used. Germans decided to use chlorine gas and it made its way across no man's land and into their trenches. This went over four miles of the front and the windblown poison gas decimated two divisions of French and Algerian colonial troops. Oh my gosh, dude, we're just slaying. <laughs> Holy shnikes! Went right past my face! Got him off of it, there we go. The thing with the barbed wire is that it pushes people to where they want people to go. So that's the concern is that if we can, okay, just raining on blood. Uh, but it pushes you into different funnels that the enemy would want you to go. <laughs> One of the weird things is that they have this experience system in this game, where you can see as you play the game, you get different experience points and then you can spend those on different classes. So I had spent that on one class where I got a bolt action rifle and a revolver. That was chaos. What? How did the bayonet not kill them? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, there's definitely one in that trench right over there. Fuck. There we go. No! <laughs> this game really tries to promote working with your team and teamwork. And if you think about World War One, if you were to go out by yourself without your officer, your NCO, basically when you're pushing up, 
uh, it's a no-go. And I mean, that kind of goes with any military theme thing, but take a look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see 10 second respawn penalty over 100 meters from section leader. So pretty interesting that they have something to keep people together. And I think it is a good idea, especially for a game like World War One, and ensuring that people will try and stick together in some way. Got him! This guy looks like he's in a really comfortable position. We can see you. <laughs> Shouldn't have missed. Yeah, same with you. Oh yeah, big boom. Oh, that is all over the place. Overall, ladies and gentlemen, what are my thoughts on Beyond the Wire? I think the game needs a lot more players. And some of the things that we've talked about today, it's a fun game, but they, man, do they need to get some more players in here. A free weekend, something like that would be super beneficial. They are still adding content to the game, so they haven't completely given up on the game, even regardless of that lower player count. So that's something to keep in mind that if you are looking to get this game, I would definitely recommend checking it out when it goes on sale. Hopefully they drop the price on the game and hopefully they get a good going sale on it at some point to bring up the community and bolster those numbers. But ladies and gents, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Be sure to check out other YouTube videos that we have. Otherwise, we stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sundays, 7.30 p.m. Central Time over at twitch.tv slash Sergeant Mad Max. We hope to see you there. Thanks, everybody. I got the streamers. Whenever I'm thinking about you Just wanna